JMATS here, GenerationD20.com, bringing you an 8-4 Innistrad block draft. And just waiting for a couple more people to jump in on the queue. Um, I'm beginning to become a little bit more familiar with uh, block as opposed to just straight Innistrad. And it still seems to be that aggressive low end of the curve decks have the most success. Uh, that being said, a card like Increasing Devotion is balmy enough, um, especially when you get the 10 on the flashback. 5 will buy you time, 10 will sometimes outright win you the game. Nothing else real strong here to drag you into white. I mean, the griffin is okay. Wake Dancer, Stormbound Geist, probably the Ripper, the Chosen, Reap the... I mean, that's where I'm seeing people probably going. So, we're not feeding white to anyone. So I think it's a pretty safe pick. And an interesting option here would be the Archdemon of Greed. Um, if you have humans, and especially if you have like human tokens like that, he can just win it on his own. The other thing is app, you can sack and flip him after your upkeep, so you can at least get in and attack for nine before you have to worry about it. We also have another token producer, um, and if we really went heavy on tokens, and then maybe got some intangible virtue or whatever the card is, hmm. this seems fun, but this is probably a better call. It keeps us in one color and um, gives us the flexibility to move and splash the other one with the double black commitment means we basically we would be saying from the first two picks we're playing black and we're playing white and I like to be a little bit more open than that um, the spirit is decent uh, the combat trick is not irrelevant Briar Pack Alpha also has nice combat trick. I do like being in green white, so the pairing there it's kind of a toss up. Um, next card to come out of this pack is De probably Death's Caress. And then maybe the Hollow Hinge Spirit. Um, I feel like the power of Alpha is a little bit higher, but the flight and the flash could be relevant, so we'll take the white card. We'll stick to our guns. Here, um, all of the white cards are actually playable. I think if I'm going to be pretty far into white, I'm okay taking the, the double white for the Cathar, and then hopefully one of those will table. Although with cards like Artful Dodge in favor of the woods, I wouldn't bet on it. Here, the really hunger can have some kind of blow up incidents, but there's nothing that strong, and I think the Iron Right could fit in our deck, depending on how it goes. Um, face shield is a a good trick, and stormbound geist would be the other possibility, but that's double blue. So I guess we stay the mono white course for now. Heavy matic actually isn't bad in a deck like this with this many humans. You put them on a Cathar or an Iron Right, and they're a lot better. Uh, young Wolf would also be a possibility. 
but I think I'm going to try to stay white until we get to pack two. Uh, Burden of Guilt versus the Inquisitor. I think we're going to have chump blockers kind of galore. So I don't know if the Burden of Guilt, I mean Burden of Guilt still does its job and has its place, but I'm thinking maybe Inquisitor over it. Creates an, another way to create a token. I don't know. We don't have any removal, so I probably should take Burden of Guilt. Go the safe way. Here, I'd say Ripper is probably the most threatening of those. We got a second Burden of Guilt, which is a nice afterthought. Uh, we could do Saving Grasp because it's flashback works. Deadly Allure is probably the most powerful card there, though. So we'll just take that. I like the idea if we were able to splash a couple of colors or got a dual land of being able to give one of our tokens death touch and force them to block it. Here. Uh, that card, if you don't have, I mean, if we end up almost mono white, then it's a decent card to play. We don't have to do a lot of mana fixing. So right now we have a couple ways to make tokens. I'll take the crappy white card just in case we decide we want to go mono white and we're short on playables. We have a couple token producers. Uh, we have the Matic to make our humans, and most of our tokens are humans. Make them a little bit better. as well as these guys a little bit better. We have a couple pseudo-removal spells to slow them down. And we're presented with one of those decisions. Um, okay. Noble, or number of noble marauders. I probably don't want it. Um, the double red commitment's a little bit much. Chapelgeist would stay with my color. Uh, travel preparations would be pretty easy to put in here. Um, I'm probably going to get the flashback off of it as well. Grasp of Phantoms would be another option for just tempo. I think we go with travel preparations. Green white is pretty solid in here and of course from here we then get a silent departure which is like one of my favorite cards in the format so we'll take the silent departure Ooh, this is a tough one intangible virtue potentially tables um, butcher's cleaver no chance at tables I think we go with the Butcher's Cleaver, because even if we're just gaining one life, or four life every time one of those guys dies, it's worth it. We don't have flying tokens, so... Well, I mean, the Virtue gets a little bit less powerful if you're not able to sail over their head to deal damage. Um, here, Stromkirk Noble would be a problem for our deck, for sure. But I think we go with the priest. And then here, probably the voiceless spirit. If we wanted or knew for sure we were going to go green, that's double green. But if we knew for sure with that many tokens, hexproof, and gaining all of the life every time a token died, that guy could get just ridiculous. Um, here... Pike could be okay. Feeling of Dread probably is a better play for us. So at this point, I'm kind of thinking Deadly Allure is not making the cut. We'll see about travel preparations. Um, we only have a little bit of blue commitment and a little bit... I guess that would be one thing of green commitment, so... 
see if we could get a traveler's amulet or something like that to help us. Uh, probably Bonds of Faith here. I would like actually all the white cards, but that gives us another removal option and a second travel preparation. We'll take that. Here, probably think twice, even though we won't play it. Or maybe we will. Could we play like two islands, two forests, and 13 planes? We are low on creatures. That's one thing we really need to focus on remedying from here on out, because we do have basically seven since the token sorceries are creating creatures, but seven is still low. Faith's shield, I'm not so sure about. We'll have to see where we get to, but at this point I don't have any creature I care about so greatly that I probably would want to use the face shield. Um, maybe the Grave Bramble. If we just come across a really fierce zombie deck, we could sideboard into a heavy green configuration. Or heavier green. Hmm. So we have one, two, three, four, and then kind of five. It's not really a removal, but it's a tempo thing, as is that. We can take the sensory deprivation. So for now, the question kind of is, how do we win? And the answer probably is Butcher's Cleaver or Heavy Matic on something or Overwhelm them with Tokens. Although more likely than not the answer is just we don't. <laughs> so we need to be looking for some win conditions in this final pack. What could get us over the hump? And right now I would say the travel preparations are actually kind of weak. Uh, just because we have so few targets for them. We'd probably be better off. Slowing their creatures and then enhancing their creatures because there's a good chance we only have one creature. And two for a 1-1, one, one, or plus one, plus one, is not a good deal. So I'm not completely against our deck at this point. Or my deck, I guess I'm not going to throw you under the bus on this one. But it definitely has some holes. And the question becomes... <laughs> Does a Sturmgeist fill those holes better, or does a Slayer of the Wicked? Slayer of the Wicked gives us another removal outlet, keeps our curve low. Sturmgeist gives us, obviously, what could be a big finisher, could give us card advantage. Could be that we've emptied our hand by that point and doesn't give us anything. I'm going to go with Slayer of the Wicked. I just, there's never been a point where I have been disappointed with this card. It always gives me value. Uh, out of this, there's a second Marauder, so that's not going to be good for us. Uh, maybe Rebuke. Rebuke would give us another answer. Um, Unruly Mob might not be bad either for the number of tokens we're playing. Hmm. Or Lantern Spirit would just give us another, another evasive threat. Maybe I'll go with that. It's not the greatest creature. 
but we just don't have a lot of evasion. We do have a couple pieces of equipment that we can saddle on to one of those. And travel preparations is still kind of sitting there wondering whether it's going to get played here. I think we take Bonds of Faith. Pilgrim would be nice, but I don't know we're going to play that much green. And the second Bonds of Faith works well. It's kind of a controlling deck with no viable win condition, which doesn't make me terribly happy. I mean, an Iron Right with a Cleaver, or a Heavy Matic and a Cleaver, or something like that, becomes a win condition. So, don't discount it that way. Village Bell Ringer would fit well in this deck. Um, the Midnight Haunting gives us a couple more potential threats and or just more tokens. The more I get of those, the more I think I probably should have taken. Oh, there's a Lumber Knot. So there's the big question. Do I want to go? I don't think I do. I'd probably be better off taking a crab than the lumber knot. Feeling of dread could give me again some tempo. It's probably the the better play there. And then from here, uh, ambush viper versus moment of heroism. I'm beginning to think we're not playing green, so moment of heroism. The sentry is a very nice pick at this point. Ooh, and the stalker. That's a very late stalker. A second sentry. Fox. So now we're picking up some creatures. We're not going to have a huge creature count, but we have our token producers, three token producers as well. And we'll have to now start thinking about what we want to cut. We're still probably a little bit low on creatures to get the full value out of travel preparations. Um, it's a little bit more tempting now that we have the invisible stalker, but I think I'd rather put my money on our equipment. And so I think I will hide green. Gets us down to 27. Uh, take the moon mist just so someone else doesn't get it. And okay, from here. The stalker has basically given us our win condition. Um. Faith Shield, I think, doesn't make the cut. Sensory Deprivation might make the cut. Okay, we want our increasing devotion, both of our sentries, our Slayer, our Spirit, Voiceless, Midnight Haunting, Iron Right, maybe. Lokathar, Moment of Faith. Or Moment of Heroism, both Bonds of Faith, Feeling of Dreads, Guy the Town Folk, the Priest, probably the Fox, both Burdens of Guilt. Um, Stalker, Silent Departure for sure, Butcher's Cleaver for sure. And that leaves us with the Spirit, Think Twice. And sensory deprivation out of that pile. We have the heavy matic, which goes, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Goes well with eight of our creatures. Could be nine if we add back the iron, right? 
probably a pretty good argument for it. What's our curve look like? Let's take a look at that. Um, our curve is such that we probably could play Iron Right, Matic, think twice, and Fox, and go with 24. Uh, we're only going to need a sprinkling of blue. So that keeps our blue to a minimum. Let's see what what they would suggest. I think two is too low. Um, I really don't even see a disadvantage of going like five eleven because our only double white is the Cathar and increasing devotion. So I could see going like that. And that puts the deck. Move a couple of these piles of land to make it a little bit better. And that puts the, the deck kind of like this. Um, townsfolk could be considered a creature for these purposes. I'll do the same with Midnight Hunting. Uh, so there's kind of the curve on creatures. We're a little bit low on creatures. We're talking about 13, but a couple of our spells, three of our spells are creating multiple creatures. Um, these enhance well with um, most of our guys. Those could be enhancements, some removal, some tempo. I think it's a, a playable deck. I don't know if it's great, but it's interesting and you know sometimes at a point in the format interesting trumps good that's something i want to play